Um, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, the invitation of FIBA and also the Federation to come here uh, and speak. Uh, a couple of years ago, I was uh, part of the FECC program, and I'm still very thankful today because of that program. I think I can say that uh, today I can live my passion and I can be a professional basketball coach. Um, for today, I do have a small problem. I woke up without a voice. So actually, I hope that my voice, that it will keep up for the next hour and 15 minutes. Uh, if not, then maybe I will need some help or whatever, but I think I'll be fine. I hope that this voice is, is loud enough for everybody. Um, what do I want to talk about? Actually, I do want to talk about uh, decision making. And decision making in the sense also in defense. And when I think about drills, when I think about creating practices, sometimes I do make a comparison with the practices I had as a small kid um, by my coaches. And what always strikes me is that in some of those drills that some of us keep uh, copying from generation to generation, well actually that there isn't enough decision making in it. And maybe I can give one example. Back in the days when we would work on defense, whatever we would do was full court, we had the slide drill, come here, open up and slide. Zigzag over the court and then at the end we would play one on one. I think that's a drill that everybody in the gym here <laughs> has done as a player. Well, why do I hate it? I'm not saying that my coach was bad, but I don't like it. Do you know why? Because I really think that that drill is one of the reasons why I always have players that are playing defense and they react on the offense and right here the player in offense he wants to change direction and what does our defense do? Ah, open up and slide here you want to change direction? Oh, I open up, let's go well actually in defense that's exactly what I do not want whenever we work on the court I never ever want to work with pre-programmed drills where players have to go from point A to point B and then have to do exercise D or whatever. That is pre-programmed. Well, why don't I like it? Because the game of basketball isn't like that. I think we can all admit that the game of basketball, that it is too complex for us as coaches to be on the sideline and to take every single decision. Don't get me wrong, that can be uh, pleasant too, but I think in that case you have to buy a PlayStation. <laughs> and uh, I recently discovered uh, playing NBA Live on the PlayStation. I'm not saying it's not fun, but it is not our job as youth coaches. I really think that there we have to do a better job. The only thing we can try to do when we work with kids, and especially today we're talking about under 14, what we need to do is to pre prepare our players to take the best possible decisions on the court. Learn them how and when to make a right decision instead of making decisions in, for them, which, oh, what I mean is that that situation very likely it won't happen exactly like that on the court. And that's the problem. Because in basketball, every single situation is a little bit different. And therefore, it is impossible to prepare our players for every possible situation on the court. And actually, why that decision making, why it is so important, it can also be, be proven in a, in a simple experiment. Can you come on the court, please? Without a ball. Well, actually what I want you to do is go in a basketball stance and keep your hand ready. 
okay? I will keep this stick here, and the moment I drop the stick, you try to catch it as fast as you can. If we will do this a couple of times, then you will see that actually it isn't very hard. Is it? No, no not really. Now we do with the left hand, I will keep this stick horizontal and you keep your hand like 10 centimeters above it. Same drill. Whenever I drop the stick, you try to catch it as quick as possible. And if we practice just a little bit, then also here, you will see that it is not <laughs> incredibly difficult. If we do it a couple of more times, you will see that this player, I'm sure, that he can do it. But actually, right now, our player, he knows how to do two possible actions on the court. The problem starts whenever he has to choose between the actions. Right now, I'm gonna drop one of the boat sticks and you can only grab the stick that falls. Okay, not the other one. What you cannot do is grab with two hands, okay? And you cannot grab with your right hand. Well, I don't want to play too long with sticks, but if you work on this and you just think about it, well, Maybe this is the part in a basketball practice which we don't do enough. If you have to translate this into basketball, it's even more clear in offense. Action A, what is it? It is the crossover step to go to the basket. Action B, that is the open step to go, in, to, go to the basket. And maybe what we do in practice is Practice for 10 minutes the crossover step, practice for 10 minutes the open step, and then we say, let's play one-on-one. -on -one. But I, then I think we have forgotten something. Then we have forgotten the step to teach the player when to take which decision. And actually, in some way, then we are training our brain. And whenever possible, we try to integrate uh, or we have attention for food, we have an athletic coach, uh, we care about psychology, we do all kinds of things, but maybe we don't train enough to take the right decisions. We don't train enough our brains. And that's actually the point I want to make. And I don't want to talk about offense today, but today I want to talk about our defense. Taking the right decisions in defense. And today I will, I will show you a lot of drills where every single time I think the drill is game-like, the situation is game-like, and players, they have to take a decision. And that's for me, that's, that's important. Uh, we're talking, to be very clear, to do, today we talk about drills for under 14 players. And we will start from 101 and we will build it up and we will, we will see different kinds of drills where we will work on that decision making. Can I have eight players on the court? First of all, to work on 101, I don't think that always it has to be very complicated. The thing is, just put your players in the, in the situation where they are in, in during the game. That is our job as a coach. First player, come towards me. First player, come towards me. I will smash the ball here. Maybe I will roll it. It will come somewhere on the court. Your job is grab the ball and put it in the ring, okay? Play one on one. Start here. Start here. Start here. Make sure that you're ready. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Next. Grab the ball and go for your one on one. Go, go, go. Ball. Go. 
Go grab it and play your one on one. Go, go, go. Play, play, play. Ready? Are you ready to play? If you stand like this, grab it, go to the basket. Good job, good job, good job, good job. Good job. I think when we teach players to play one-on-one, -on -one, we have to avoid the fact where actually we play one-on-one -on -one like we do in street ball, where we have two players on top, player in offense, player in defense, player in offense, we give him the ball, he checks it, he starts shaking and baking it and, and whatever, whatever they see in the NBA actually, and then they go to the basket. I don't know if that is the right setup to teach all one-on-one -on -one defense. I think what we need to do is go to an under-14 game and look to all the situations where a player plays one-on-one. -on -one. And often I think we end up in situations like this. Under 14 basketball, that is a full court game. It is not a game where we have uh, a lot of organized uh, set plays on the top with a check and where a player has five seconds to, to fake and to drive and to jab step and whatsoever. I don't want that as a coach. If I'm the coach, I want the ball to move and on the catch play in offense. And so I have to prepare my players for the defense too. Similar, the two players start here on the black line, you're right here, move your feet, watch in front of you, okay? The moment you see a ball, you play one-on-one. -on -one. Look in front of you, look in front of you, head up, head up, head up, head up. Okay, wait guys, what can we teach at this point for our defense? First of all, you can also call it a reaction drill where players are ready, they are in a basketball stance and they have to react on the moment when they see the ball. That is, first thing, when you see the ball, try to grab it. But actually, right here, Every single time, the player who doesn't have the ball, yeah, he has to start playing defense. What can we teach right here? Your very first job in defense here is make sure that, that you are in between the ball and the basket. To protect the basket, go as quick as possible in between the ball and the basket. We turn it around. We start again on the black line, but now we play it full court. Ready? Ball. Next two players. Two players, two players, two players. Watch in front of you. Stop. 
people always say, yeah, it's like a ma mindset and uh, you play defense with your heart and you have to do it every single practice. But creating that mentality, I think it starts in drills like this. And on top of that, in drills where the situation is game-like and where all the situations are different. And that's also the reason why we throw the ball in all different kinds of ways. We will go on. Um, I have eight players on the court. Can I have two in defense there? Two in defense in the bucket. Three players stay in the middle. You go free throw line extended. Can I have another player free throw line extended there? Another player free throw line extended and one free throw line extended. Uh, can you go free throw line extended? <clears throat> Whenever when you are outside the court, whoever is free throw line extended is outside the court. Whenever we work on transition, when we will work full court, and now for one minute I will grab back to the drills I did when I was probably under 14. Back then we always did the 11 man drill. And I think everybody in the gym knows it, but just to make sure. We have three players in offense. You play three on two, okay? Whoever takes the rebound, give the outlet pass to one of the two players outside the court and he goes along with them to play on the other side, three on two. Well, maybe I don't even want to show it because they told me they would film uh, the session and I don't want to be on game tape with doing this drill, so maybe I won't do it live. But I think that everybody knows which drill I mean. I never do it. You know why? But because probably all of us have played basketball in the past. You have to think how many times during a basketball game did you have this situation? In offense or in defense, where three players would come at you with the ball and we have two players in defense there waiting for you. Well, actually, I never did, I think. So that's not how I want to play my uh, transition game on practice either. So we'll do it differently. Uh, you go free throw line extended two. The two of you step out on every side, free throw line extended. Uh, one player is out. We start with two on one. Two players with the ball, you will play two on one on that side and we make the rule, whoever did not take the last shot, sprint back. Everybody else who's on the court, grab the rebound and give the outlet pass to the first player here or the first player there. And the two of you, you will play two on one on the other side. Not shooter, sprint back. Ready? Let's go. <clears throat> We back, yes, yell for the ball. Back, 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 back. <clears throat> you step off, you step off. Not shooter, back! Outlet! No! Stop, start again. Two players with the ball in the middle. You stay in defense. I have nobody on the court here waiting. The two of you, you will play an offense and it is the not shooter who is back. Players in offense, yell for the ball. There's a rebound, yell for the ball. I don't have a voice today, but do you have, so you have to yell. Whatever the player that is back in defense, yell defense. That's another thing I definitely want to mention today. When I go to youth games, very often I hear and see uh, coaches next to the side. I hear them yell, yeah, talk in defense, talk in defense. And they go crazy and they keep repeating it, talk in defense. 
and then you have to watch the faces of the players and some players they are really looking at each other yeah what are we going to talk about or what are we going to say and i think that's upon us if our players don't talk in defense maybe one of the reasons is that we didn't teach them what to say in what situation and that's upon us and we really have to build it up and we have to say and we have to uh, make agreements on which verbal we want in which situation right now the player that didn't take the last shot sprint back and yell I'm back I'm back okay let's go <clears throat> Harder, harder, harder. Back, back, back. We have to turn over. It's up to you. You lost the ball. Go get it, go get it, go get it. <clears throat> Who's back? Yell it! Who's back? Who's back? Okay, stop. We go with three players in offense. We start with two players in the bucket right here. You. You go in the middle behind the baseline. You go in the middle behind the baseline. Whenever we want to build it up, right here, we can go one step further. But of course, on practice, we have to make sure that the first step, it was better. But once more, if I compare these types of drills with the situation of the 11 man drill, then for me, there is a big difference for the defense. Because for the defense right now, every single situation, it is difference, different. Sometimes you have an advantage as a defender. Sometimes you're late, you're running behind. Every single situation is different. And never ever do we come in a situation where two defenders are waiting for us like that when two, when three players are coming for us in offense. It is game-like and every single time it is different and it puts our players in different situations which they face every single game. We go one step further, three on two. Now there are two players that did not take the last shot. Well, they sprint back. Who's yelling for the ball? That's you and that's you. Together with you, you will play three on two on the other side. You are running it like a trailer, okay? After your offense there, there are two players that didn't take the shot, sprint back. Let's go. <clears throat> Who's the third one? Who was the second defender? Outlet! Who's back? Who's back? Who's back? Who's back? Okay, stop. Start again. Three players in offense in the middle. Two players start here. You start in the middle, right? For the two players that are running backwards, right now, once more, every single situation, it is different. In which situation we put them? Right now, we have to teach them how to run back, where to run back, and teach them what do we expect from them. Well, every single time right now, there are two players that didn't take the last shot. First of all, till half court, sprint as hard as you can. 
And for the first player, in my philosophy, his job to sprint would be under the basket. He would sprint here and he would yell safety. When I'm working with kids, this is my first rule I would teach. First player back, protect your own basket, be safety. And with that rule, there is a verbal. Head under the basket and we yell safety. Second player who is coming afterwards, sprint back, sprint back, sprint back, and we go for the high post. His verbal is top. Okay, safety and top, every single time, two players communicating it. Let's go. <laughs> Start again, three players in the middle. We want to end up in the situation where we have that one player that calls safety and the other one is on the top. From there on, we have to make rules and we have to help them better. Here today, in this drill, of course, we put them in a situation where they are playing live right away. We can do it more easy. Uh, those three players start on the baseline, corner, middle, corner. The three of you come in defense. I need one more player. Can you change your shirt? Everybody on this side, can you go red? The same for you. Three players in the middle, in red, with a ball. When we, <clears throat> when we make it three on three, then our defense isn't, it, isn't that far behind and they also have three defenders, then it will be easier to organize it. The three of you, you will play an offense over there. No balls, queens, play it quick, play transition basketball. But after your offense, you have to get back, okay? Team on the court, give an outlet pass, either to the right, either to the left. And that player that receives the ball, you have to dribble it, okay? For the moment, you cannot have the quick swing and reverse the ball right here, okay? You will dribble it on this side of the court. Team that is sprinting back, first one, cover safety. Second one, cover the top. And when those two spots are filled, there is a third player. What is he doing? Well, he will pick up the ball, he will slow down the ball, and for me it means that he keeps the ball on the side. Okay? No middle. Okay? Red has the ball. Let's go. Oh. Black, 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 get back, get back, get back. Freeze! Freeze, stay here. Who was the first one back? That's you, sprint with your head on the basket, call safety. You're the second one, sprint to the high post, call top. You are the third one, you were sprinting back. The moment you heard the verbals, safety and top, you know my back is covered. I can slow down the offense, okay? You will start picking up the ball here, no middle. Let's go. Outlet! Back, 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 back. Get back, cover safety on top. Yes, yes. Get back, get back. Spin back, cover your spots. <coughs> Who's on the ball?
Guys, every single possession, I do need to hear safety and top. Not one single time where we don't yell. Sprint back, let's go. <clears throat> Stay. Don't move. You have safety. You have top. The moment you hear them, you are right here. You will slow down the ball and you will try to keep it on one side. What happens if around half court they swing the ball to the other side? When the ball goes to the top and you dribble it, who's responsible? That's the first pass. What are you doing? Always under the ball. No, 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 no. Not that high. Not in transition. You sprint back. Okay? If the ball is swung further, it is that player that was down here. You will step out to the ball. What is your job? Safety right here. Okay? You will cover now that spot under the basket. Every single time in offense, around half court, we swing the ball to the other side. Ready? Let's go. Play, 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 play. Who's back? What? Yell your spot. Black start here. I want to hear safety. I want to hear top. Let's go! Go back! Ball baseline, leg ball! Cover your spots! Who's picking up the ball? Okay, get her in the middle. Of course, this needs more time on the court, but for me, this is, in the three on two, and for sure in the three on three, this is how I start building up my transition defense. And I do think that uh, transition defense, uh, as is a transition offense, today a lot of games are decided in that segment of the game instead of completely only working half court and whatsoever. For me on the 14, a lot of what I do, it's always full court. I do want to take, I do want to show you one more transition drill, drill which I like a lot. Um, guys, come to the middle. <clears throat> we are 12, I want to have four players. You stay together, you are one team. These four players stay together. One, two, three, and four. Come here. And we have one team here. What I want you to do is, under the basket there, half court for you. Half court on the other side, and you behind the baseline. What do we have? We have two teams on the court. We play four on four until one of both teams makes the basket. Suppose that Team Black is playing an offense on that side. And suppose they make a basket. Whenever they make a basket, they sprint back. But it is Team Red, you step off. You take the ball out of the net and it is your team that will play an offense to that side against Team Black. Your job is to come on this side of the court and yell for the ball, okay? Team Red, you have to go then, middle, middle, baseline, baseline there. 
Okay? Ready? Like as a ball, let's go. Play, play, play. No. Keep going, keep going. Yes. No, no, same team, same team. Was there a basket? Then we stay with the same team. Let's go. Red in offense. Same team. Start again. Go there. Go there. Same position. Of course, for now, the drill really gets interesting whenever there is a basket. But then, of course, they need to score, right? The thing is, what I like about it is that after a basket, they immediately they have to sprint back and they have to make that, that switch in their head between offense and defense. And that is what for me, at a young age, that's very important uh, to teach it. Because I see too many kids that, yeah, after they score a basket, they wait for two seconds or they're waving at their mom or, or girlfriend in the stances, I don't know. But then sprint back, think about the next action. When we say that the transition to offense or the transition to defense is that important in the game of basketball, then I really think that we need a lot to spend a lot of time on practice on that transition. Feed the ball again in the post. Let him score. Let him score. Team Black out. No, Black back. Black back. You step out. Baseline, middle, middle, and over there. Play, play. <laughs> score it, score it. Go to the basket. Let him score. Let him score. Let him score. Red up. Red back. The other team fill up. Middle, middle. The player that is waiting behind the baseline, you become offense. After a basket, once more, do it slow. Who's an offense? Raise your hand. Who's an offense? Whenever, stay, stay, you're an offense. Whenever there is a basket, those go half court. Those four players, you, 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 and you, you become offense. So you step on the court and you yell for the ball, right? Team Black that scored, sprint back, okay? Penetrate and let him score, okay? Let's go. Let's go, let's go. Nee, nee, ik weet het. Ik, ik heb drie teams. Is it clear? Is it clear what I want to show? Of course, this drill, it takes a little bit of time. And the players, yeah, they have to get used to it. Okay? I don't want, I don't want to go through it until all the players know how the drill work. But it is on that transition between offense and defense that we try to work. For the same reason, when we go three on three on a practice with kids, what I like to do, for instance, that is playing the three on three with the FIBA rules. In the sense that after a basket, the ball is still live. And it is up to the defense to grab the ball, give the outlet pass, and play right away. 
Why do I like it? Well, it's very simple. Once again, for the transition. After your offense, immediately make that switch, think about the next action, okay? If on, if on practice we only play three on three, where we hand the ball in the middle and we check it and we start playing street ball, then I don't like it at all. Because that is not the game situation in which we play our three on three and five on five. I, I do want to come back to the situation in slowing down the ball around half court and closing the middle. Can I have all the players behind the baseline right here in two lines? One line is in the corner, one line is at the end of the bucket line. Players in this line, they have a ball, so you have to look for five balls. <coughs> okay, when I blow the whistle, the first two players you will start. You will start sprinting to the other side, and while sprinting, we give three passes. One pass, second pass, third pass. And on the third pass on, we play live one-on-one. -on -one. You're in offense, you are in defense. Okay, what is important? Keep the ball, please. What is important for me for the defense to teach? Well, first of all, that is, if we watch the defenders, what we don't want from our kids is that this defender, that you just sprint in a straight line, and that after the third pass, that we're just sprinting in the bucket and towards our basket. That is what we don't want. We want our player in offense to put him under pressure. After the third pass, we come closer, and here we try to close the middle. How do we close the middle? Well, that's matter with our wingspan, we come closer, and we go as high as the player is. Okay? Go! Yes, good job, good job. One, two, three. No, 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 no. Behind the baseline. One, two, three. Again, <clears throat> hold the ball, please. Again, for the player in defense here, every situation, it is different. And here, this player, first job for him is get in between the ball and the basket. And it can happen right here that after the last pass, he is behind. Well, what does he need to do when he's behind? Then he has to keep sprinting to get in front of him, to get into or between the ball and the basket. Can also happen that after that third pass, he gives the pass, but he has the advantage. If he has the advantage, he can come closer right away to close that middle, okay? Go! Of course, in offense, you cannot cheat. What I don't want is that after the second pass, that you are coming closer and closer to the middle. You have to stick on the sideline till on the third pass you caught the ball. Go! One, two, three. Yes, yes, yes. You give the ball to him and stay here in defense. Take the ball and go away. No, no. You stay under the basket. The importance of closing the middle. 
to show our players we do exactly the same drill but for you as a defender it is good to know that after the third pass you get help if he beats you baseline side okay if he beats you on this side of the court you step out you play your help defense and you stop the penetration okay but more important for you to know is that if he beats you through the middle you just step off the court and you don't show any help okay because if I with under 14 if I work on with my defense and I go further and further in the construction of the defense yeah then you will see that in my philosophy there is indeed help when we are beaten baseline side but whenever we are beaten through the middle it's very hard or close to impossible to help so we have to implement it also in our drills baseline drive there is help middle no help go <coughs> Don't cheat, eh? the moment you catch the ball, you have to be on the sideline. Go! Do a better job, guys! After that third pass, go closer on him! Go! <clears throat> For me, important is that that defender after the third pass right here he's going away as if we have as if we are scared if i put an extra defender there that means that here you can go harder and you can go closer and you can put more pressure yes and not less and a message for the player in defense if we come to help then you really have to leave your spot. I want you to start with your heart, with your head under the basket, but when there is a baseline drive, step out and stop the player outside of the bucket. Don't stay there, then it's useless, okay? Ready? Don't put pressure, no middle, no middle, no middle. Why are you backing off in help defense? Go at him! Take the charge! One, two, three. Help defense. Help. One, two, three. Go closer, guys. After the third pass, go closer and put more pressure. Good job, good job, good job. Close the middle, close the middle. Where's my help defense? Last one. Okay, stop. Uh, can I have two players in the corner? Two players in the corner, one player at half court in the corner, one player at half court in the corner, two players in defense, and two players in offense right here. Can you start in the middle? We only need one ball, this one, all the rest away. You're on offense on the right side, you're on offense on the left side. Can you go in the corner behind him? Okay. <clears throat> to, to work further on our help defense there and the rotation, what I like to do is this two-on-two -two half court drill. What is going to happen? Stay in the corner, stay in the corner. These two players, 
You play an offense on that side. We stay half court, okay? After the possession, the defense gives an outlet pass to one of the two corners and you pass it up to the middle. And it is to the two players in offense to sprint at the middle and to come and play defense. After your offense, sprint to the middle to play defense. Ready? Go! Outlet pass, you pick it up, the two of you come to the middle, you stay together, you're the next team, outlet pass to the corner, pick it up right here. <coughs> outlet, outlet, freeze. You're an offense here, the, that team come to the middle, yes. Of course, this is the moment where we need to talk about our rules and what we expect from our players. For this player, your job is what we also did in the, in the last drills. Put as much pressure as you can, but for sure close the middle. Use your arms, and actually we want to send him to that corner, right? You close the middle here. For that second player, what we definitely do not want is of course that you stay with your man, okay? What we expect from you is to be on the basket line, the line rim rim. Whenever you are beaten by the baseline side, what's gonna happen? Then you come to help, okay? And you yell, help. That means that you sprint to the bucket and we make this rotation between the two players. You will see by definition that when I told in the previous drill that that player, that he had to step off when there was a middle penetration, well, here you will see that whenever he is beaten through the middle, it's very, very, very hard for the defense anyway. So here it is not a, a rule where the defense steps off by a middle penetration, but here you will see that it's almost impossible to still stop the attack, okay? When you are in help. Yes, in this case we, we yell help, okay? Be ready here, be in a stance, move your feet, active hands, active feet. What are you yelling? Ball, ball. you're on the ball. Let's go guys. Ball, ball. <coughs> outlet, outlet, pick it up, pick it up. You're in help. Outlet. Pick up half court. Outlet, outlet, pick up, pick up, help, below, close the middle there. Guys, I want to see a better communication. Ball is on the left here, on the ball. Yell ball, put pressure. You are yelling help, help. When now the ball is swung to the other side, you step out. Yell ball, ball, ball. Your help. Let's go, continue. Help, help, help. <coughs> ball, ball, ball. Outlet, outlet, pick up, pick up, pick up. No middle there. When you are in help defense, always active feet, adjust your position to the situation where you can always and watch the ball and watch the other player. Okay? Let's go. Box him out, box him out, outlet pass, outlet pass. Talk, guys! Rotate, good job! Outlet, outlet! No middle! More pressure on the ball. No middle! 
This last one, that's exactly what I mean. If there is a middle penetration, it gets very, very hard. Um, <coughs> a problem that I face often in teaching defense or in, in games, and actually it is in all the age categories, that is that it is very hard to teach players to speak, that's one thing. So once more, we have to start teaching at a very young age with the right verbals, who says what in which situation, but also, also who is committing to the ball. Whenever there is a situation out of a rotation, when the ball is swung and two players are helping, that they watch each other for two seconds and that nobody really anticipates and sprints out and makes it clear, I'm going for the ball. And that communication. Sometimes I have no players going for the ball, Some play, sometimes two players at the same time, sometimes, yeah, they're not talking. What are we doing? Um, I only need eight players, the eight of you. So that means that the four of you, you can have a sit. We have two players in the corner, two players at 45. Can I have one ball, please? <clears throat> You are in help defense and you are in help defense too. One player in offense, one is out of bounds. One player in offense, one is out of bounds. The ball is right here. I'm here as a coach standing with the ball. But the defense, because of the reason I just mentioned, you are not just waiting. And this is not your man. And you are not committed to that player only. What I want you to do is, the two of you start moving in a circle around, okay? With your hands up, the two of you. At a certain moment, I will give the skip pass to either one of the players, okay? Who's stepping out to the ball? That one that is closest to the ball. It is not fixed beforehand, okay? And that's what I mean with in game situations, we are in help, a pass is coming, maybe there are situations where the distance for both players is exactly or nearly exactly the same. Who is committing for the ball? We all know that in this situation, the secret is that we have, the, have to use the air time of the ball to get to our spot on the court. And of course, if we lose that second because we're watching each other and it's not clear who has to go, then we lose our advantage. Ball, please. <laughs> Ready? Go! Stop! Oh, guys, wake up! What are you yelling? Yell ball! Be aggressive! Active hands! Active feet! No middle! To which position are you going? You are one pass away, right here. I want your hand in the passing lane, okay? But don't overdo it. I say your hand in the passing lane. I'm not saying your head. Then we risk to have the hand off. What is your job? If this player penetrates the baseline side, then you open up, you stunt, but you stay responsible for your player. What happens if there is a penetration through the middle? <coughs> then you have a problem, right? Because we close the middle and we never ever have a middle penetration. Let's go. Go, go, go. Go, guys. Close out. Guys, talk in defense. Whoever is first, sprint out to the ball. No, oh, wait, wait, wait. Ready? Let's go. Move, move. Circle. Same direction, please. Yes, thank you. Ready? Go. Stop. 
Guys, you have to talk. If you sprint out for the ball, you have to yell, ball. And that takes some time. But there is another thing that frustrates me a lot. When do we yell, ball? Most of the times it takes me some time before they yell, ball. But then they do it too late. <laughs> when are you yelling for the ball? It is on the moment that you are sliding here, somewhere in your sight, you see a ball, and in a split second you think, oh, it's up to me. Then, as soon as possible, yell ball and sprint out. And not after you made the sprint, you're on the ball, you're working. Oh yeah, I have to yell ball, ball. Hey coach, I, I said it, I talked. Don't yell at me because I yelled ball. Yeah, okay. You yelled ball at the moment that the whole gym saw that you were on the ball. Then it's pretty useless, right? It is on the moment that you take the decision. Oh, it's up to me to get the ball. Then we need you to communicate because it is for that other player that knows, oh, he's going to the ball, so I'm going to the second player. Ready? Same players. Let's go. Stop. <clears throat> Do it again. Was up to you. You were closest. Your teammate was there. It's up to you. You were closest to the ball. Circle, circle, circle. No middle, no middle. Okay, wing, players in offense. Wing, top, and wing. And I have a third player in the bucket right here. <coughs> if we go one step further, then of course we can do this in three on three. Those three players, you do exactly the same thing. You form your circle, make sure to have active hands too. At a certain moment, I will roll the ball to one of the players. Who's going out? Whoever is closest at that moment and who yells first, sprint out to the ball. Then I have two players left. Whoever is closest, yell top, top, top. You come in a denial. What's your position? You stay and help. Two feet in the bucket, make sure to see your man and the ball. Okay? Active hands, active feet. <coughs> Go! Oh, no, no, no. Stop! Do it again. This was, this was the perfect example. When did you yell ball? That was the moment that you were already here. When do I want you to yell ball? The moment here that you watch your shoulder, okay? When you take the decision, it's up to me to stop the ball, okay? Yell it sooner. Ready, go. Stop, do it again, same problem. We yell ball when everybody has seen that you're on the ball. Yell it sooner. And then of course, then this is the next step. When we have two players, they both think, yeah, it's up to me. That's the reason why they have to yell it loud. And for me, that moment that he yells for the ball, that's also the moment that, which I call, that's the point of no return. If there is one player that ye yelled out loud, ball, then it's up to him. Then it's not up to somebody else. Yeah, but actually I'm closer. You know what? Maybe I should go. No, 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 no. No discussions. One player, yell it out loud, ball, sprint out, no discussion. And for me, this last thing, for me, that's, that's a hard one, for sure with kids. And you cannot start soon enough, because we were talking today about decision making. Well, for me, this is decision making. This is those players on the court that have to decide who is responsible for the ball, who should go first. Take the decision, but also make the communication. Yeah? Yell it out loud to build up a team defense.
And if we don't teach this at a young age, it is very hard to do it later on in your career. Um, this is the moment where I want to leave it up to you. I don't know if anybody has any questions. Otherwise, we can do it during the break. But I do want to have an applause for the players. Uh, for them, it's not easy to have a new coach without a voice. And I hope I made myself clear to you and that you understood me. Uh, I do want to thank you for your attention. Thank you.